Hello everyone and welcome to finally another video of autopilot testing. Now we've been in lockdown for uh, close to two months now and uh, I wasn't able to drive or test any of the updates. I've got a couple of them. So right now we are at uh, 2020.12.11.1 and let's see what's what. Now one thing I noticed in the past couple of updates is that when you are behind a car at a traffic light for example and that car in front of you accelerates then uh, my car follows a lot more aggressively I would say uh, even to the point where you can feel the car in front of you shift in gears. Now let's see what it does at the bottom here. Oh wow yeah that is really searching for the center of that lane after the middle lane marking disappears. So that has definitely gotten worse. Now here we are coming up as usual to that S-curve. It's not looking too busy in terms of traffic. It's still uh, early morning and so-called rush hour, but due to the semi lockdown there's still not a lot of people on the road at the moment so that's good now let's see what the car does in this update will it still go over the line yes or no it's not slowing down it is going over the line keeping it in check rather quickly but again here going to the center line beeping again because of the limitation of the stupid UNECE rules and here again I had to intervene because that guy was cutting over the line on the inside so um, yeah no changes here it's uh, yeah it's just those uh, stupid rules that need to change to keep the car in check or Tesla needs to slow down way before going into that turn uh, which it has done before it was just before new year's i believe that it actually worked that way and for some reason it doesn't anymore now let's see if we want to merge here on the highway what it will do there there's the truck on my left i'm going to accelerate a little bit I need to manually initiate so that's already good let's see if it continues to blink no that seems to be gone that seems to be gone so uh, in the previous updates it uh, started blinking all on its own when you were there in that first lane uh, for some reason it was still taking you were on the uh, on-ramp so yeah so here we have a sign, no unnecessary travel. Um, what I'm actually doing right now is I'm going to pick up my tires at my parents' place where they are uh, stored for the winter. And then I'm going to put the Aragnets back on finally so the car will again look the part. And since we need to travel to uh, Antwerp anyway, um, I thought there was, this was a good opportunity to once more test the update. Since I'm doing most of the, uh, most of the route along my test route anyways, uh, coming back later this morning. So uh, yeah, that was a nice opportunity to finally do another test. Now let's see how well the auto exit staking works. Yeah, a bit jerky, um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there doesn't seem to be a change uh, so far. I'm going to test it later on with another exit when I'm coming back. Actually, I need to take this exit as well, so let's see if there's any difference 
I've never tested this one. This is also a gradual one. But let's see how it works. Oh, it seems it's uh, waiting a little bit, then going onto the exit, but then it takes too long to find a road and then it shifts another time. So it's kind of like in two motions that it takes these kinds of exits. Now in a few hundred meters I need to take the exit. I'm on a highway so it's going to take the exit automatically. I'm not driving the 120 kph that I'm supposed to because I'm behind this truck but it's a hard exit. Uh, it's a small one, a narrow one but it goes immediately to the side so let's see how the car reacts. Yeah, <laughs> uh, each and every time it does that, I think it's going to hit the barrier. So I don't have the nerve to, uh, to let it do its thing because I know it reacts too slow to certain changes. But uh, yeah, that is something that still needs to improve with regards to the automatic exit taking. All right, we've got a bunch of uh, trucks here. So let's see if I slow down a little bit, what the car will do if I go from the third lane to the second lane. So let's see if it still detects the truck in the second lane instead of in the first lane. So starting now. Yep. It still hesitates and thinks the truck is in the second lane then stops the maneuver and then says, oh, it isn't, and then continues the maneuver. So Tesla, that is still something you urgently need to fix. So something else I noticed is that, yeah, here we go, that the weaving is uh, back again. So now it's weaving a little bit to the middle, going left again. I really don't like that behavior. Um, I've got people complaining about getting seasick in the car so yeah it, it was gone in the previous updates but now it's back again unfortunately now let's see for the exit staking so unfortunately I can't take it at 120 kph because of this truck in front of me but let's see if it takes it uh, rather well So again a slow opening exit yeah so it's again in two times it's going right stays in the middle a little bit then going right again also here that's oh that's turning way too late wow i get a feeling that the exit taking has gotten worse and let's see if it takes the second exit here still no end of navigate on autopilot, okay, so it should take the exit. Yeah. All right. It uh, disengaged autopilot, but uh, before that it was taking the exit again. So the ending of navigate on autopilot has been moved back to the intersection instead of uh, what we had uh, before was somewhere halfway around the uh, off-ramp. Slight improvement there, although it doesn't take the exit uh, completely automatic because of navigate on autopilot or autopilot in general disengaging. Okay, up ahead we have the lane shift. Let's hope we have a green light and we can continue. And there's no car cutting me off, but uh, Nope, looks like I'll have to uh, try and accelerate through it. There's no car behind me, so I'll take a little bit more distance. Oh, 
Right, here we go. Give me autopilot. Okay, accelerating through 70. Here we go. Yep, that's okay. It's not as close to the edge as the previous update was that I tested. So that's a little bit better. And uh, yeah, it still is a little bit lazy in the corners, which is in this case kind of like human driving. So yeah, for me, that's good right now. And now for the final test where the lane markings disappeared completely. And let's see how close it gets to those cars as well. That's rather close, but still doing it. Okay, let's see how quickly it goes to the side. Almost immediately, but with a little jiggle. So the last update was a little bit better. Let me slow down here. Let's see how it takes the intersection. Yeah, not too bad. Let's see if we can continue all the way up to that little divider, where it has never been really able to take it. Um, so again, slowing down for the intersection here. Foot on the brake. No car coming, okay. Let's see if we can take this at 30 kilometers an hour. Uh, yeah, okay, it actually did that. And now let's see the last time I was able to hold autopilot all the way to the end. It went to the left side of the road here. So let's see where it wants to go now. No. Okay, it stays on the correct side of the road. So that is definitely an improvement compared to the last time I was able to test it all the way up to that point. All right, time for another conclusion. So what can we say about this update? Now there's been a couple of updates in between so we made quite a big jump from the last one that I made until now. Unfortunately, the changes that are in here are tiny still. So first of all, we have a, a little bit worse of a situation on the downhill section where it loses the center lane marking. There it goes way more to the left uh, before finding the lane again. So it should be easy or fairly easy to just determine that this is just a path that is going straight on. Um, but that's been, yeah, like a problem uh, for ages now and uh, Tesla does not seem to be able to fix that. Uh, as for the S-curve, there's no change there. Maybe a little bit more aggressive that it slows down when it detects it is going over the line, but the culprit there is still the UN ECE R79 regulations. And uh, yeah, as far as I know, the next meeting is only in September and maybe then it will be approved to get higher lateral G-forces. But uh, before that, I don't expect any improvement on that level. As for the auto exit taking, there is a slight improvement there in the sense that when I took the last exit, it was actually still capable of doing the secondary exit uh, on the exit itself uh, or on the off ramp. Uh, whereas it used to be able to do that in the first updates, but then it quickly got reduced to halfway the off ramp and then navigate on autopilot would just stop working at that point. So again, we're going up to the intersection, which is good, although it's not able to take the exit by itself uh, and autopilot was disengaged. I tried it a couple of times and each and every time it disengaged. So uh, yes, some work to do there, but it is a slight improvement on that level. Uh, other than that, uh, we still have that section um, where it loses the lane marking, so the, the last test that I do. Um, 
it's it's going both ways there. It was a little bit more jittery when uh, the lane markings disappeared, but it kept to the right side of the lane, and it actually made that small S curve uh, there or that small lane shift with the uh, divider in the middle. Although I was really scared it was going to scratch my rims because it is a really narrow section. But in the end, the only time I was able to test it up until there, uh, it took the left side of the road. Now it stayed on the right side, so that is also an improvement that we can mark here. Um, yeah, other than that, pretty much the same stuff. Remember, I'm still on Autopilot 2.0. I've asked multiple times to get the FSD upgrade that I'm owed. Um, so far, Tesla, the only answer that they give me is uh, your, call, your car is being called based on VIN number and we are uh, prioritizing Autopilot 2.5 and MCU2 cars. Um, they have no clue when Autopilot 2.0 and MCU1 cars are going to be upgraded. If any of you guys have an Autopilot 2.0 with MCU1 that have been upgraded, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I would like to have a chat with you. Um, but also, yeah, so it's, it's undetermined when I will be able to finally get the upgrade that I paid for right now, over three and a half years ago. But anyways, uh, as usual, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe using that button down there. And uh, make sure you click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. And for now, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye bye.